I smash my car wide open. We don't have anyone around who can do any work to it. I can tell him to drive the lorry to you, but he says there's a fuse that needs to be changed and he knows where it is. What can you do for me? Monday morning, we're in the yard, Tony and I, because Terry is off again. The man's gone fishing. He's not going to catch anything because I'm not with him, because I'm the one who taught Terry how to fish. Click here to watch a video when I taught Terry how to fish. Got a problem on the skip lorry where it can't lift anything heavy, but Mark says he knows where the fuse is, so we're going to send him to Auto Electrics Company. They are going to have a look and hopefully they can get it fixed now. We're going to move the accounts team from this office to the office downstairs if you watch last week and the week before we were creating these new offices and they're ready to go accounts office so we need coat hooks shelf for printer shelf for kettle which is angled so people don't cut themselves top of wall for folders can you see if you can reach please because if i build it and you can't reach yeah, fine. I'll let the cleaner know that as of next Sunday, they'll be cleaning in here. They didn't know that's my fault. That's why it's not cleaned. Water, it's not oh, water dispenser. No, water dispenser. All right, fine. Everybody seems to be happy enough. As happy as someone could be on a Monday morning, getting all their stuff moved to a new office. And the train has arrived. So we have a nice working office now. The plug you can see here, yeah. this is so we can put a television on the wall. So this office can also see the cameras. Why don't you speak to David and see if our 1.7 Kubota, which is uh, the refurbishment project, if we can put that out on hire and then Ben can move it. Okay. All our one and a half ton machines that are in stock are out. Why are you limping? Uh, I tore my hamstring, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you tear your hamstring as you went in in the 90th minute and rattled the bar and scored the winner? No, I wish I did that. Did you win? No, we lost 2-1. <laughs> <laughs> were you winning 1-0? No, we were 1-0 down and then went 2-0 down. So you had a consolation at the end? Yeah, a consolation. So we've gone from 11-0 to 6-0 yeah. to 2-1. We're improving. All right, I'll let you get that. You know when they say it's got to get worse before it gets better? Well, in the backyard, this is a primary example. It is an absolute mess here. Not to mention, I'm not too happy today because I've been talking about how busy we are on the concrete, but today we are dead. We have got hardly any concrete on. There's five lorries and the pump. They're all in the yard. Thankfully, two of the concrete drivers had the day booked off and the others have gone into tippers. It's the deadest day we've had for a while. In this area, we dismantled the walls. We've built back one wall, what's going to keep the 10 mil separate. But there's a predicament here. Our steels on our back wall. This wall is nice and strong, but what's happened over time, when we're scraping, cleaning, we're now beneath these blocks. I've got a couple of options here. Take off all the blocks on the back and dig down and then go again, which I don't really want to do. Or I can build up material here and then put the blocks on top of the material after it's been compacted. And the issue is the level here and the level over there are completely different. The only solution I can think what's going to make sense, but it's going to cost the most money. Have a look over here at the concrete slab. When we scrape this, this is not going to go lower. Clean it out, get down to a hard surface and then pour up to the line. So we'll build a wall along this concrete base here and we'll put up some shutter in and this entire area, we're going to pour a massive concrete slab. This means that the blocks we put will have a completely firm base. They will be level, they'll interlock, they'll be stronger. And when we scrape in the future, we won't be digging the ground from underneath the blocks. It's the most expensive thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. This could be 200 meters of concrete. But if I don't, will I end up doing it three times, four times? Can something happen to a wall? Is it worth the risk? Yeah, yes. So I think the best thing to do is just to get on with it and make it happen. I told you earlier about our 1.75 ton Kubota. Dudek said that my townie would need to take a look around it and while we're using it on our site, 
that machine is about 15 years old and while we look after it it's probably not ideal for us to put that out on hire so i'm not going to take the risk the closest machine we can collect from our partner fox is up in leyland where i did the video on the five tippers which we purchased click here to watch that video so ben is going to head up to leyland in the morning and collect this machine so we have it ready to deliver on wednesday morning and before you say it you are right it is not profitable to spend an entire day driving hundreds of miles to go and collect a 1.5 ton machine which is only going to be out on hire for two weeks however when you have a business in its infancy, like we do with plant hire, you can't afford to let people down. Now this client uses us for concrete and skips at the moment. So this is a cross sell for us. If we don't give them a machine, the person who does give them a machine may offer them more services and then we don't get another chance to get in the door. If we offer them the old machine on site and it breaks down, we might lose their trust and lose all the work completely. So the only way I can really see to navigate this situation is to have a lost leader. We're gonna lose in the short term to gain in the long term. And I'm not gonna cross hire it from someone else because it's gonna have all their artwork all over it. If it's Fox on it or Hurt Plant, fine. They're within our group. I had a call from a surgeon and I ain't going back under the knife. You saw I had an operation on my shoulder about 18 months to two years ago. Well, I had a scan and my shoulder looks exactly the same way it did before I had the operation and the problem isn't fixed. He said, when? I said, as quickly as possible, let's get it done before Christmas so I can try to recover. I'm gonna be honest, I'm fuming that over the Christmas period when I would have worked anyway, my shoulder won't be operational and I'm gonna be in pain. And I'm also thinking about the amount of weight I'm gonna gain. You can see through all the past episodes that my weight fluctuates and I need to be training because I have a gigantic appetite and I'm built more for strength than I am speed. This could be six months I ain't gonna be able to train properly. And I know I could moderately eat, but in the grand scheme of things, in the long term, am I gonna be able to moderately maintain that for all those months? History would say no. And that's it for Monday. Trying to put a long bucket under there, the wheels. As we were going all the way up to Leyland and there was space on the lorry, we thought we'd collect a few more machines to keep them in stock. Keep going, keep going. Throw that digger down there, yeah, and I can strap that. And then we put that one there, yeah. And then we'll have to drive up to it. So we'll put another row in front and then we'll put two rows at the other level and then each step is 400. Yeah. This is where the top level yeah. starts. Yeah. And then when I have this one done, yeah. I have to measure including the slope. So we'll build this and we've got our slope going that yeah. and across the front of that wall, we've got the drain. This will determine how much we need to excavate for there. And we'll fill this with hardcore. Also echo drain, we have echo drain over there. You want one more here? What do you mean I want? It's not I want, <laughs> I no, want. It's not the side of the Yeah, no, 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 we need. <laughs> Tuesday, we're not in the yard. Dudek is trying to blame me he said you want you want it's not what i want it's what's needed so the owner of this house they're the same height as me they're slimmer a lot slimmer but they've got the same size feet as me so if i was to climb on this step this isn't enough and someone's going to fall down these blocks are 220 mil we're going to make each of these steps around 400 deep so we're going to build another set of blocks in front of these and then the bottom step which is going to be down here we're going to put two blocks again so we're going to have the level first step second step and then over here is the level of the slab when we've done this this level of the slab will determine the back area because we're going to have a drain right in front of the wall which is going to be over on that side if you remember two weeks ago you saw us building this massive soak away with the crates we are going to take hardcore and we're going to fill this area then we're going to fill up this also and we're going to prepare to pour a slab here one take So big man is drilling 100 mil into the existing slab. We've cut these pieces of 16 mil rebar and big man is beating them into the slab. This is the tile which is selected internally. It's 120 by 120. Now here are the samples 
of external tiles. We can't have the same tile inside and outside because this tile isn't made to be outside. When it gets frosty to like minus four or something, the tile will probably crack or people will slip and break their neck, which I can't have. So. I think this is the closest match. It's a good match, but to make things even more difficult and the boys are pulling all kind of faces. This tile is 1200 mil by 1200 mil and I want the external tile to also be 1200 mil by 1200 mil. What I want to be able to do is walk in the front door and the grout line of the internal tile, I want to be able to see that grout line go from inside all the way to outside. Those are the small details in a high-end house when you think, wow, what a house, but you don't know why. I know it's small work. I know the boys are going to hate me for it. They're going to call me all sorts of names behind my back. What are you saying? The steps will be difficult now to do. The steps will be difficult and we will have more waste, but it, it, yeah. is it the right thing to do? Yeah, and that's how we do it. Thank you. Wall is done, yeah? Ready for TV to hanging, yeah? Yeah. Do you want the bracket for TV just to be in the wall and the TV or bracket sticking out? But if you build out this size, then you have to build that side out yes. as well. And we've done this because of the niche that's going to be on the yes. bathtub on the other side. Supposed to finish cut only this bit, but then Chris said we have to build up wall anyway here. Yeah. He have easy access for the pipes. Ah. Or build up for fixing the mixer. So the bath is on the other side of this, yeah. and Chris can go underneath to install all the bits. So the question is, do we want to build up the wall so the TV is sunk, or so just the bracket? In this area, the bath is on the other side of this wall. In a bathroom, you see a wall which is cut out and you have a light and you have glass shelves and you can put all your bubbly so you can enjoy your bath time and your rubber duck, whatever it is you like to have in the bath. So the wall is gonna be built out on this side and the lads are asking me, how deep do we want to build this wall out? So could we sink the bracket or sink the TV? And I think the best thing for aesthetics is to build it out enough that the TV is sunk. So when you're basically here, the TV is flush. Now the TV needs to be on a pullout bracket because you can get to all the sockets and all the data cables. We have run the cables for the television and I believe we have the power here. Nice. We have to weld something under this. That's really? That's building control. Really? Yeah. Building control pulled us on that? Oh, hold on a minute. Okay. So the steel was like this already, yeah. and building control have come and collared us and told us we got to do more work. If you have a look, this steel is sat on the wall, but a bit of it is hanging off. This was all existing. Building control have got us to weld a plate here to support the rest of this. So we have to improve the existing structure. So we're getting collared for work that was nothing to do with us. Ah. We have this profile, which is supporting the H profile up here and our steel rafters. Now we want to get rid of this because this looks ugly and the engineer has prepared a detail for us. So over here, we need to create a T piece from here and here, what goes here. So we're going to bolt it here, bolt it here, and then we're going to connect here. And this means that we can get rid of this. And in case I didn't explain it well, here's a drawing on screen of the profile. I'm standing in the dressing area and you saw the insulation work we've been doing over the past few weeks. But because of the thickness and the buildup, we used a quilt system here. It's about this thick and it's equivalent to like 100 mil. That has been fitted in the area above here and the air conditioning units are over here. This is the suspended ceiling system. So now you can see the height. So by the time we include all the flooring and we put the plasterboard, you're gonna have a 2.4 finish throughout the property, which is a decent height. A couple of weeks back, you saw us looking at the insulation and the timber buildup we were doing here. So overall, we could have 160 mil. Well, that is done, as you can see by the fantastic work here. And if you see these small clips, you might think, what are these for? This is so we can connect the stud system and then the plasterboard will screw into this. So the ceilings in this area are ready to be plasterboarded completely, but we are waiting for the windows to go in. And if I show you over here, we have done all the OSB board and closed this off. And if you remember a while back, I showed you a graphic of how the air conditioning unit was gonna be hung here and the air would go into the room and it would circulate. Well, the frame we've built here is the support what we're gonna hang the air conditioning unit from. But is not here today because he had an operation. He is making a recovery, he's up after his op, and he is in good spirits, so we wish Bartek well. But in Bartek's absence, we carry on with the work.
on the way back to the yard, I'm trying to think about how I'm going to fit this operation in and how much I can try to do before the operation and what I can actually do while I'm immobile. Will I be able to use one hand to type? What could I record? Um, what brainstorming could I do? I'm trying to think how long before I'm out of the sling, how long before I'm not in pain. I'm trying to work it around work and I may have to reschedule my entire diary. Ben's here. Man, should really pack it on, didn't he? Taking off the five tonner, putting it into stock. Uh, this machine's gonna be going out tomorrow, so we're gonna leave it on, and we've got a dumper over there, which we're gonna take off and also put into stock. A little bit of trouble with a uh, volumetric earlier. Somehow, a steel rod or something was loaded into it. It must have been hidden in the material. And as the conveyor belt was turning, it jammed in the conveyor. I'm in the way. As the conveyor belt was turning, it jammed in the way and it jammed the belt and we had to manually take all the material off the belt and we had to manually get in and clean it out. Luckily, that lorry is back out working now, but it took half a day to get it done. I'm just happy there wasn't any damage. Well, it was damage, but not significant damage. The, the lorry can still work. Let's get it all offloaded. Now. There I was, gonna go and buy a load of um, reinforcement, and we've got mesh on the floor here. I should open my eyes. over a bit closer. This is the customer I was telling you about that we wanted to keep happy. Now, they also wanted a couple of bolt bags of type one. So we were able to use the crane on the roll on roll off to drop off the material, drag the skip to the side to make more space and deliver the machine all at one time. That is exactly what this lorry was made for. Wednesday, and I'm in the yard, heading round to the back of the yard because Dudek is here to have a look at the work that we are going to do on Saturday pouring the concrete. Seven meters. When he's on the line, that's the level, yeah? A nice slab, see, we can use that slab. Didn't we pour this no, slab? No, we we didn't, it was already there, yeah? yeah? So from there to where we get level over there. Seven meters is Seven meters, yeah? I don't know, you tell me, is seven meters enough? And here is that level there, yeah? No, no, no. This level over there? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's mean you have to make it, or we do it slow, but we'll be like 10, 30 centimeters of slope. All of these blocks have to sit on top of this. The blocks now are only gonna go to here. You just put this in level, mm. and you did, from this section you're gonna get step, and you just fill in with the hard gold or something. I don't mind the step. Is this the right level here? Yeah, that's the level. This is the level that that needs to be. You're saying that this, this, is the same level as the back, so we're okay. Yeah, this, uh, we don't have to put the concrete here. Well, I'm not pouring the concrete then. Okay, I was thinking you want to scrape it off. No, 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 anyway. no, I'm pouring, I was only pouring the concrete to do the level. I want to pour as little concrete as possible, but I don't want problems with the base. Let's pre pre prepare this section for now, yeah. Yeah, did you see the reinforcement over there? Yeah. Can we use that? So we don't need to buy anything. No. You see, I come up with a plan and then 
I speak to the team and then the plan often evolves. We achieve the same end result. A lot of the time um, they find a better, quicker, and in this case, a cheaper way of doing it, which is always great. And at the refurbishment project the other day, I was telling you about the stairs we were gonna build, but now Dudek has decided that the way we discussed we're gonna build it, he's gonna build it another way. He's gonna put the blocks in front and pour concrete, whereas I thought we we're gonna make it all out of blocks. And uh, I'm not mad, because uh, I think Dudek I think knows what he's doing. You know what you're doing, don't you? Yep. Yeah, he's pretty sure he knows what he's doing. And so am I, so I'll leave him to it. On the way into Central to a black tyre event, the time is 6.13. At the yard, Brighty, Javier and Meds, everyone's still working on getting out a video. Click here to watch it. One billion tonnes of construction aggregate. It was back when I was in Glen Sander, owned by Aggregate Industries, one of the biggest quarries there are. But it's a quarry running side by side with a complete ecosystem of wildlife and there's a sustainability plan it's really interesting like watch it if you get a chance if i'm going to be honest with myself i'm trying to run the firm i'm trying to go to all these events i'm trying to network i'm trying to do my brand deals and the video like i don't want to say this but i know that we could have done the video better 1% better, 2% better, 3% better, then I get an idea. Um, we haven't explained it fully here. Let's do a bit of voiceover. Let's show a cutaway here. But me doing this, am I doing it for me and will anyone else watch it? Or am I just treating it like an art too much? Because we see video making as an art. No disrespect to anyone else's channel. They've got their own style and they get it out as quick as possible. The more they can get out, the better, because obviously if it does views, they get revenue. The way I look at these videos, this is a snapshot of what's going on at the moment. And I want to watch these videos back in 10 years, if I'm lucky enough to still be around, and say, that's a great video, man. Some of the videos, when I go back and watch them now, like I went back and watched, um, it wasn't, it's not been out that long, but click here to watch World's Biggest Self-Discharging Ship. I watched that video again the other day and I was like, oh my goodness, this is a great video. Now this video we've just put out, I feel like it explains everything but the graphics, and meds won't mind me saying it, the graphics and what I say explain what we're trying to say, but they are not the best graphics we've ever done that has been based on time. Now I could pull the video and not put the video out for another week, but if the graphic is 30% better, 40% better, it still explains the same thing. And is anyone else gonna watch the video or am I really doing it for me? You guys, you tell me. The graphics and things we do, do they help explain? And if the graphic is 10 or 20% better, is it gonna bother you if the level of graphics, what could take two days of work off someone, are you less likely to watch if that graphic was a little bit more basic? You tell me, because we're driving ourselves mad over here. <laughs> I'm on the way back from the event. I left everyone to it. The merrymaking started, but it's a busy day tomorrow, so it's a school night and it is not the right time. It was good to bump into some people I hadn't seen in a while. And as I was leaving, a gentleman came up to me and said he watched one of my very first videos. Click here to watch that video. I don't know what, <laughs> what video the video team are gonna select, but he said one of the first videos and it pushed him to start his own business. And then he said he wrote on one of my Instagram posts and said he's going to do it. And I said, good luck, push on, I wish you the best. And he just told me that he's completely changed his life, his business is doing well, and he took the leap and he thanked me. And I had to kind of stop him in his tracks. And I had to say, I did a video of me showcasing what I was doing, but you made the decision. You took the leap of faith. You took the risk and now you have a business and he told me that he was employing various members of his family and it was going really well. So now I thanked him for giving me the feedback and telling me because it's good to know that you're making a difference in people's lives. And if that video, can you imagine if every video 
changes one person's life. And there's definitely worse things that people could be watching or they could be watching things which make them feel down about themselves or everyone's doing well and I'm not doing well. Just to make a point of it, not to get too preachy, not to try to spit bars and get all emotional, yeah? The most difficult thing is starting and you need to have fortitude and you need to have consistency and you need to understand that it's not gonna happen quickly and for the love of the almighty, you need to not listen, I'm not mentioning names, to foolish people on social media saying, just start a business, choose your hours, work for yourself. And when you work for yourself, your work-life balance will be better and you will work three days a week and earn 10,000 pound a day. Don't get me wrong, you might. You might be the next Mark Zuckerberg. I'm not like a computer guy with a computer brain. Unfortunately or fortunately, my skill set is logistics and operations and kind of like sales in an industry that involves my passion, engineering, trucks, trains, um, machines. But that's not to say you won't, but it will not be easy. But you have to start. Worrying what other people are gonna think and worrying that you might not succeed and what is gonna happen, you are basically putting a deposit and a down payment on a future which may never exist. This negative outcome that you have in your head, that may never happen. Who said that that's gonna happen? So if the thought is there and the idea is there, Christmas is coming, maybe some of you will have downtime over Christmas, sit down, write your business plan down, put it in action, do your research. You have Google. Do you know how many people started businesses before the internet? They couldn't research. Now is the best time. The people gone by in years, they never had access to any of the things that we have access to, and they, they never had mobile phones. We have all these things which connect us and give us all the information we need so we don't have an excuse. So don't be shook. And you know that I'm not, you know that I could never be shook. Don't be shook. If you want to try and do something, the only way to know is to try. And if you fail, at least you tried. There is no shame in failing and going out on your shield. If you're boasting and you're, and you're trying to show off and talking prematurely before your time, then it can be slightly embarrassing. But keep it humble and push on and know that the race is not for the swift. Give it a go. Just give it a go. And thank you to the gentleman for giving me that feedback and telling me that watching the video pushed him to do the work himself that changed his life. That's it for a preachy Wednesday evening. It's Thursday morning. Hit the gym early. I'm really tired. Not that that's important. That's irrelevant. Outside Volvo need a couple of parts for the volumetric. You saw us buy a couple of weeks ago. There are these gaskets on the exhaust and on Volvo FMXs. Uh, they have grills on the lights and one side is damaged, so we're looking to replace that. And I thought I'd go in, send my townie the pictures to make sure they're the right thing. Sometimes it's a lot more simple to just make sure it's the right thing for half an hour and then it goes on the lorry and then it's done and dusted. I've arrived in the yard, and so is the train. It's 3 p.m., I'm in the backyard. Thomas, you're going back out. You're going back out again, yeah? Let's see that, see that, this like, meh, this puddle. I'm moving all these blocks now to prepare and the lads from the build firm will be here tomorrow morning to push on. Been flat out in the yard today. How are we doing, Flo, you all right? I was, 
talking for a little while about our Amarox and getting extended warranty on them because those V6s are very big lumps. And I spoke about the proposal that came from a company which was not Volkswagen, which Volkswagen put us onto. And then we looked at the offering from Volkswagen where Volkswagen said they want like 1,200 pound a year and the maximum claim was two and a half grand. When a second hand new engine for an Amarok is six and a half grand. I just wanted to try to protect the Amarok so we had a fallback position in case something went wrong. But if I have to pay 1,200 pound for a maximum claim of 2,500 pound, it's, it really doesn't make sense. So on those three Amaroks, that's Terry's, Sam's and Darren's. I'm actually not going to get the warranty now because it doesn't make sense and I'm someone who always wants warranty on the vehicles because yearly if I base it over a three-year period what I was going to do all the money I would pay on that warranty if I just hold out and take my chances I'm taking enough chances as you can see in the yard but if I just hold out and take my chances then basically maybe I'll end up paying the same that I pay them in the case that something may happen, I may just end up hopefully paying that in repairs. I hope, but I would prefer I had warranty. So I just had dinner in Central. Um, with my mate Tunde that you've seen in the past, just having a catch up. I've come back to my car and this is what's happened. I smashed my car wide open to take my bag. What just happened now? Yep. That'd be a lesson to you. Don't have a car and don't have a bag and don't have it in the boot of your car in central London because you will lose it. I can't drive back like this, it's breaking everywhere, so I guess I just gotta, look at this, anything that's loose, I just have to lose it. Well, I've got aircon now. <laughs> so, I just realized when I actually really assess what's going on and I've, and I've soaked it all in. <laughs> I actually got a parking ticket as well and my windscreen's cracked. So I've gone for something to eat and I've lost my front and back windows. And I've managed to get myself a parking ticket. Ah, uh, yes. And I've lost my bag. Now, I've worked out now, they've obviously smashed it because the, the make of the bag, they've obviously thought, well, this is a bag, we can get money for it, there must be expensive things in it. What they've actually got is my work uniform, but I've lost my Batman all-purpose utility belt. I like to wear a Batman belt for work, because I'm that guy. Luckily, I got a spare one from when I was filming Building Impossible. But you know what? I can't even be bothered to be upset about it. It just is what it is. My stuff gets broken all day. I'm not gonna go into it, but people steal from me. It just happens the whole time. Do you know what? Just throw it into the pile with the rest of it. It is what it is. I know I shouldn't think like that, but what's the point in getting worked up? What's it gonna do? Is it gonna bring it back? Is it gonna pay for it? No, it's not. Let me just give thanks that there wasn't, other than the bag, there wasn't, well, my, my, my all-purpose Batman utility belt is of value to me, but not to anyone else. And do you know what? If you needed to smash my window in central London, West End like that, you obviously needed it, so. God bless you. It's challenging, man. <laughs> it's challenging. <laughs> 
It's Friday, and on the way to the yard. Just past the Nashville Grab. And as you can hear, it's quite windy in here. <laughs> because I've got no back window. I've worked out that in my bag that got taken last night, I've got two work jumpers. They weren't expensive, little H&M numbers, but those are my jumpers. That's what I like to wear to work. They're warm, but at the same time they're thin, and they've got that stretch in there. You know what I mean? So I can stretch into it when the weight fluctuates. One's in the wash, and because they took one, hopefully now whoever took it isn't flexing with it somewhere, trying to get down and work in my work jumper. But I've gone for the oversized shirt. Now I was saving this for when it got a little bit colder because it's quite thick. But to be fair, today is six degrees. So when I get into the yard, I'm gonna hit them with the black oversized cashmere shirt and see how they like it. <laughs> God, I gotta look on the bright side of it. And I've got my second all-purpose utility belt. I'm halfway back. Liam is trying to find prices at the moment um, for a new windscreen and a back window. So I'm gonna go to the yard and um, when someone can do it, then I'm just gonna go and drop the car off to them or hopefully they will come to the yard and fix it. I'm so lucky that he weren't rolling. Look at that. Oh, yeah, it's going from bad to worse. <laughs> Look at this. I put my foot here, bang, clap in my face, smash the teacup out my hand. Oh, and now I'm gonna have a bruise for my troubles. Great, how are we getting on? If you're gonna pour to there, you haven't gone far out enough. The blocks are gonna to be to here. You gotta go bigger. We're gonna start moving them. Yeah. And start pulling at the same time. Once we look at what's going on here, the most expensive and the best way to do it, because the most expensive is always the best way, we're gonna remove this, move this entire thing out, and pour over this so that we can protect all of that. So we're gonna end up pouring about oh, nearly 200 meters of concrete here. So we've got a fuel delivery. We've got a cement delivery. Saturday and I'm in the yard. We're working on the weekend like usual. The morning started with just mix up, general mix up. We didn't know what was going on. Dudek came in with the boys and there was heavy rain. Dudek turned around and said, we can't pour in this kind of rain. We're gonna have to stop. He sent some of the boys home. Then the rain stopped. And then he said, we've got less people here, but this concrete needs to be done because on Monday, we're down to three lorries because of various breakdowns and other issues. And we've already got 80 meters of concrete on and other people could call and book concrete on and we're not gonna have any lorries in the yard to be able to pour. So when the rain stopped, Dudek said, let's get this concrete poured, but with a much smaller team. Over a quarter of a way through the pool. You can see the level. 
just underneath the wall. And you can see this is open. We've left this open so the trucks can reverse in. That was Dudek's idea, not mine. It is currently not raining. There's a lorry over there loading, which is gonna come straight back. I like how this is going. Simultaneously, at the same time, we are doing the work in the office, what I told you about on Monday, to give the finance team the small bits and pieces they need for that office to be fully functional. Now I'm gonna get out of the way for two reasons. One, because we're gonna finish off this concrete pour. Two, because another new tipper has arrived. smell. Look how nice it looks. It's going to look like this for a couple of hours. <laughs> it's going to be covered in mud. But that is a working lorry for you. Oh, we need some stainless steel mirror covers. Got to protect their mirrors. Look at the inside. Look how fresh it is. Love it. Separate video alert. We're outside the tyre area. See this tyre gauge, my new tyre gauge goes up to 175 psi. Look at this. You all said, I eh, don't know what he's doing. The tire cage isn't safe. Do you know what we're doing? We're testing it. We're filming the video today, testing this tire cage with brand new 295s. And we'll find out, do we know what we're doing? Or are we a bunch of donuts who have no idea? You're spending too much time making videos, they said. Film quick videos, they said. Use the stuff around the yard and film a quick video. You haven't got to fly to Scotland to film a video. You don't need all that voiceover. You don't need all them graphics, they said. Film a simple video like everybody else. They're doing so many numbers and they're not going to all the trouble you are. Have an easy life, they said. Look, I can't even do this. I can't even explode a tire right. I bet you any money when they go on the road on Monday, I bet them tires will be going left, right and centre. Punchers in the morning. Nobody can go and do the jobs. The clients will go mad and all the tires will have loads of tire problems. But when I go to film the video, I have endless problems. Of course. Why would it go according to plan? Who told you not to go to another country? Well, firstly, you, because you miss me. Decent C40 concrete. This will be dry by Monday. We won't build it up on Monday because we have a train in. Maybe we'll start. But Tuesday, we'll be able to build our new bays for the material which we don't want to be mixed with any of the dirt in the floor. The rain is a massive challenge for us, and it means that we'll be able to scrape the bottom of these bays uh, if we do change the material that's there. So good day's work on a Saturday. Let's go check the offices. Office work is done. We have the shelf, what is perfect for folders. I have a folder, I will show you. Boom. Nice. We took this filing cabinet out of the container. Perfectly fits for the printer. We have a worktop space here. We have a wall hung cupboard here, what was in the container. And we have an under unit cupboard, which was also in the container. We have some worktop that was in the container. And we have the fridge, which was upstairs. They've all been brought down and everything is working perfectly. And on that door right there, we have coat hooks, which mean people don't need to hang their coats on these things anymore. On the wall here, we need to have some of those boards where you can use pins and stick stuff on it. And the TV, what will go on the wall. But this is a lovely, working finance office. 600 by 200. I need new signs for the bays, which we're gonna start. Oh. Oh. 
What size were these? I don't remember. 500. Five hundred by two meters. As important as it is to build the base, as important as it is to keep the yard clean, as important as it is for all the health and safety, as important as it is to keep the material separated, segregated, and not have any contamination. If you do all of that and you don't label the bay, they can still come in here and get upset and you still get rumbled to say that uh, you're not leading people correctly. So I need one of these signs, two to six, one, four to 20, one, four to 10 gravel, four to 20 gravel, zero to 20 ballast, because in the past I called it four to 20 ballast. It's not four to 20 ballast, it's four to 20 shingle, which is mixed with a zero to four sand, which then makes zero to 20, 40 mil gray slate, 40 mil blue slate, 40 mil plum slate, type three. Gonna send off and try and get a few of those made, all done in exactly the same way. Yellow background, back, a black outline, and a simple Asheville in the middle. And that is it for Asheville Weekly, episode 163, I think. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here, subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video on Glen Sander, where material was made 400 million years ago and there's a billion ton of it. And click here for last week's episode, which was number 162. Of course, they tipped the material over and destroyed the bag. Of course, 